Well, hello, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of The Big Picture with Larry Raglan. I am your host, Larry Raglan. And as you can see behind me, coming to you this time live. Not live. I'm actually recording this, but uh, it'll be live when you see it. Uh, from a home office. I'll call it a home studio. Thankful that I have the opportunity to work from home at times. That's what I'm doing tonight. We're we'll coming here tonight. We're going to talk about what might seem like a difficult subject. Sitting here thinking about life and death. That's what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about the brevity of life. We're going to talk about the things that we need to focus on in our life. Not just in this world, but in the eternity to come. So let's do it. On the big picture. All right, welcome back in. Let's get right to it and let's talk about the subject tonight. Sitting here thinking tonight at home about death and life. Uh, Two very important aspects that we're all going to face. Of course, if you're a student of Scripture, unless you read in the Bible where it talks about Elijah and Enoch that um, did not die, everybody else has died. Everybody's going to die. The old saying is, two sure things in life, death and taxes. Um, Really, the only sure thing in life is there, you know, it's really two sure things in life. One, there is a God, and two, you're not him. Everything else... um, we may die, we may go by way of the Lord taking us home in a rapture, if you believe in that or not. I personally do. But tonight I want to talk to you about, just real quickly, and I, this is not going to be a long broadcast, long podcast. This will be also on my podcast. This is YouTube and podcast called The Big Picture. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that red subscribe button down there. Huge, so, so important that you do that uh, because that helps us um, – and the algorithm and getting in front of people and helping people in their life. Uh, and then of course you hit that subscribe button and then you hit that like button, that thumbs up button. I mean, and then you enable notifications and that way you get notified every time we post a new video. But if you listen to it on podcast, make sure you follow our podcast, give us a five star review and share this with someone. So let's get into this. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs thirteen twenty two, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So see so your legacy, that's what we're talking about, is not just financial inheritance, but a legacy of your life. Not just to your children, but your children's children. In other words, God wants us to live a life that is generational, that outlives our life. And the saying that I always talk about is God wants us to live a life that outlives our life. And then I go further and say things like, you know, Hey, I'm still alive, so I'm not going to die while I'm alive. I'll die when I'm dead. As long as I'm living, I'm going, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to live. Okay, so that sounds like just preacher talk there, but it's bold when you think about it. A lot of folks are walking around almost like um, zombies, quite frankly, uh, the walking dead, because they're still breathing. They still, their organs are still working, but they've given up on life. They've, they are not living a life. They're living a slow death. I I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. The years that I got left, and I'm encouraging you to take the years that you got left and live your life. The Bible goes on to say, I believe it's in the book of James, not in my notes, but it's in the book of James where it says, life is but a vapor, a vapor. It appears for a moment and then it vanishes away. And I know when you're young, if you, I remember how it was when you were in school and it just seemed like time just drags on. Uh, when you start thinking about, you know, I got to go to school for 12 years. Are you kidding me? And it just 12 years just seems like an eternity. Then you graduate high school and 12 years seems like nothing. And then next thing you know, 20 years seems like nothing. Next thing you know, you're like me and you're in your 50s. And now you got grown kids and now you got a grandbaby who you might hear in the background running around hollering, saying Papa or something. I don't know. But she's, I can hear her back there. I don't know if you can hear her or not. She's having a good time, and I love that. And that, of course, that helps you. 
appreciate life. Uh, there's nothing like the Papa life. Uh, and of course, if you're a lady, the Nana or Mama life or whatever, grandmother life, GG, whatever you are. Uh, but that just feeds you life. But the reason that I'm making this broadcast tonight is because honestly, I, I just went to another funeral today. And, you know, I'm going to try to get through this without crying, y'all. But um, I've had a lot of people in my family uh, pass away lately. I mean, a lot of people. I've seen more people pass away in my family in the last year than I, quite frankly, can remember happening in, you know, five to ten year periods. Uh, And, of course, some of it has been related to the thing that's been around the world for a couple of years. But most most of the time, it's not been that. And, of course, some of you may know that I just recently lost my mother uh, not long ago. Uh, she passed away at the beginning of this year, which, you know, was very tough for me because, you know, my mom raised me as a single mother from the time I was in the fifth grade uh, and was still raising me uh, even after I had my own kids and was raising them. So that was difficult to lose my mom. But, you know, I've lost several cousins. I lost a what I call a cousin-in-law, but I don't really claim him married to a cousin and being a cousin-in-law. He was he was he was a cousin, but he's more like an uncle to me today. Was, um, I mean, just one of the greatest men of God that I've ever known. He was such an impactful person in my life, and uh, always encouraged me. I was going through the things that you know, maybe you've read my book where you know that I've had some serious issues with my father and and just you know, time to deal with things throughout my high school years. And this man was always there and he was always pulling me off to the side and saying things like, Hey man, I want you to know, son, listen to me, son. You're doing, you're, you're a good boy. You're a good man. Um, just don't listen to that mess. Keep serving the Lord. Meant a lot to me. Uh, and, um, I stood there in the back of that church and if I could just be rich retrospective just a little bit, it's a small Methodist church, not not far from where I live now. And that church was so packed out that uh, I didn't know if I was even going to get in the building. They had an overflow going into the fellowship hall with a screen down there. There were people standing outside. They couldn't get in. And I just took a chance if I could just find a place to stand, and I, and I was able to do that. And I was able to stand in the, the hallway of the foyer and they had the doors propped open, and I was looking through. Uh, the doors and watching all these people just recognize the legacy of this man and how much he had meant to so many people. And and I looked around and uh, there was multiple policemen there that knew him. Just the mayor of the city was there. I mean, so many people. And they talked about how last night, the the night before the funeral, whether, you know, how it is in your culture, but down here in the South, we have things, uh, some people call them wake, some people call them um, the viewing where there'll just be a time for people to reconnect, come in and encourage the family. And, and they'll just, the funeral will not be that night. It would just be, you know, everybody would just come in there uh, with the one they've lost and all the other people that they love and see people they hadn't seen in years and uh, encourage each other. And you come back the next day for the funeral, which is what today was. And uh, so I stood back there in this funeral and they were, they were getting up there saying that last night there was, a line that was between an hour and a half and two hour wait standing in line just to get inside this building to see this man, this man, um, I want to honor him. He was never a pastor. He was never, I think they said today, he never even really called himself a preacher, but he had a lifetime of serving God. He poured it into his two sons who are now grown and have wives and children of their own poured it into his wife. He poured it into people that he worked with. I heard testimonies of people that's been best friends with him, even all the way back to when they were, you know, just kids and in high school. And um, it was just touching to to hear them all say that, you know, many of them, I'm living for God because of this man, because of his testimony, because of how he lived his life before me. And I stood there and I started looking around that room and I started seeing faces that I had not seen some of them 25 years, and I started recognizing their faces. And then I, some of them I remember their names, some of them didn't remember their names, but I remember them, and I remember them from high school. And, and, I, and I would see them weeping, crying, hands raised, worshiping God. And 
quite frankly, some of them uh, probably felt the same way about me as I felt about them, thinking I never thought I'd ever see the word Jesus come out of their mouth. But here they are in their old age, and it seems like life has a way of of really bringing us back to the way we were raised. And, and I was so touched by that. I was also retrospective in the sense that that church, that little church where my cousin's husband that made such an impact on my entire life, even back to when I was a young man because he was older than me, was also the church that I preached my very first sermon in. My very first sermon that I ever preached was in this little Methodist church. And I remember standing there looking today up at the pulpit, seeing these three different ministers speaking about my cousin. I'll call him my cousin from here on out. Uh, And my mind went back to 1990 when I preached in this little building and I preached a sermon. The devil, get this, see if this is not fitting today. It was called The Devil's Infiltration into the Church. (laughs) What a title. What a title for your first sermon, The Devil's Infiltration into the Church. If you can believe this, uh, at the time of this recording, it's 2022, that was preached in 1990. I still have those handwritten notes in my desk in my office that I pull out sometimes and look at it. I still have that sermon, my very first sermon I ever wrote out called The Devil's Infiltration into the Church. And I probably need to get that thing back out and preach it again now. But I want to just tell you that the Word of God is filled with scriptures regarding uh, legacy, regarding living a life that outlives your life. Um You know, the Bible says that this promise that God has given us is for us, for our children, for our children's children, and as many as the Lord God calls. So the promise of life here on this earth is for all, but it's also the the greatest promise is not just life, to live a life that is a life worth living here. But when I looked around that room, I just thought all these people, are brokenhearted that they have lost this man that meant so much to them, and especially his wife, children, and grandchildren. Um, But there was just a peace there. There was just, and that's not preacher talk, y'all. I'm talking about it just felt so good. People were laughing. There was a peace. There was... There was nothing being worked up. Oh, he's in a better place. He's not suffering anymore. And that's true. And those words were said. And But you hear that all the time. But it don't feel some all the time like, my God, it's really, really real. Uh, I found myself standing there going, my God, that it just feels so peaceful. This place is packed so hard, that so so full of people you couldn't even hardly breathe. I mean, people were everywhere. They were up in the balcony, this little small balcony they had. They were shoved in this Sunday school room on the side. They were in the foyer. As I said, they were in the overflow. But nobody was upset. Nobody was angry. They were glad to be there to honor this man. But more than anything, there was a peace inside that building that was just incredible. So I want to encourage you today that if you don't understand that peace, that peace that passes all understanding. The Bible says the peace that passes all understanding. That means there's a peace that don't make any sense. There's a peace that 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 just you can't explain it. You can't you can't even identify where it comes from. Therefore, we know that it doesn't come from ourselves, and it doesn't certainly come from our circumstances. It comes from our God. So tonight's broadcast is a little different. Um. I'm sad because I loved him so much. I lost my cousin that I grew up with just just weeks ago. He he died suddenly. He was my age. He, um, you know, we walked the creeks together. We climbed trees together. We built army forts together. Um, He's gone. I lost another cousin that I was raised my entire life next door to on the hillside of our family. Played with my whole childhood. She's gone. I lost my mother. I've lost multiple aunts, multiple uncles uh, along the way over these last couple of years. And, you know, it never gets easy. It never gets easier. But it makes you reflect. So I want to encourage you. And take a deep breath and be big picture. That's why we call this broadcast The Big Picture. To always know that there's more out there than what you can see. 
and there's more going on than what you're thinking about. Um, there's an eternity that's waiting on us all. It's not popular for preachers to teach about this anymore, but I'm going to say it on this broadcast today, and I'm probably going to say it many times over the years as long as God will allow me to have this platform. The old preachers used to say it this way, there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. If there is a God, there is a devil. If there is a heaven, there is a hell. So you know what? You might have tuned into this and thought, I'm just going to watch him talk about the dangers of cancel culture, the dangers of wokeness. I'm going, I'm going to just, I'm going to shout it. Yeah, you go, you go, you go, all this kind of stuff, but not on this one. I want to close this one by telling you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, can I tell you right now, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad of a person you think you've been, you ain't been as near as bad as you think you are. You thought the roof would cave in you when you went to a church. You thought you was already going to be struck by lightning, but yet still here you are. You know why? Because God is still giving you a shot. He's still giving you a chance. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, can I tell you something? Going to church, don't do it. Joining a church, don't do it. Being in a Sunday school, won't do it. The only way that you know that your heart is right with God, the Bible says confession of the heart, confession with the mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks confession when you know that when you confess that jesus was not only a good man he wasn't a good man that walked around it was a good prophet no when you confess that jesus is the son of god that jesus is god he's equal with god and he and god the word the bible tells us in john chapter one became flesh and dwelt among us and he lived a sinless life and age 30 he began his ministry and just three and a half years later they nailed him to a cross naked and trying to shame him there in front of everyone as his mother sat at the base of that cross, John the apostle next to his mother, thieves hanging on both sides. You know the story. He took care of his mother. He took care of the thief beside him. He took care of everybody that was around that cross. And then he took one big deep breath. He bowed his head and he died. And when he did that, he took care of you. He took care of me. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But he shed his blood, and a New Testament began. And that wasn't the end of the story. You know, three days later, Jesus came back from the dead. and He's alive forevermore. I feel him on me right now. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Maybe you was raised in church, like a lot of those folks I looked around that room, just like me, that ran from God. When you, when you thought you was grown, you thought you didn't need church, you thought you didn't need your mama. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he shall not depart from it. I heard people praising God today. I never would have dreamed of praising God. That was a testimony of the life of their mothers and their fathers and their grandpas and their grandmothers taking them to church and praying over them. But here you are. You know where you stand with God. Don't you think it's time to come home? Don't you think it's time to make sure that if something wants to happen to you, and I'm not speaking that about you, and your family is sitting in a room looking at you in a casket, looking at you on a picture, thinking about your life, talking about your life, talking about memories. Will there be a peace in that room? Will there be a peace like there was today? Did you live a life that outlived your life? Were you still, are you still touching lives in a room after you've breathed your last breath? My cousin was today because he knew his heart was right with God. So pray this prayer with me. This is what you got to mean. Mean it in your heart. Don't just say these words, but mean it in your heart. Come broken before God and just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. God, I ask you to forgive me, and I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm right with God, and I want to be able to tell my family that I am right with God and that I have a true relationship with him so that when they stand there in that pulpit and they talk about you, they tell the memories, and they can truly say without just being uh, clicheous, he's in a better place. They'll say it with confidence. They'll say it with compassion. No doubt he or she is in a better place. I hope that tonight you make that decision. Whether you're watching this live, whether you're watching it on replay, because that's the most important thing you can ever know in your life. I love you. I know it's been a little bit different. Next broadcast, I'll be myself and I'll be wide open. But tonight, I feel like some people needed to hear it. God bless you. Have a great night. Go tell somebody that you prayed that prayer tonight, especially your loved ones. 
you don't know what it, you some of y'all might need to call your grandma and tell her thank you grandma for never giving up on me amen you've been watching or listening to the big picture with larry raglan if you're watching this on youtube make sure that you hit that subscribe button that thumbs up button let's see thumbs up button i'm backwards here <laughs> Leave us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Share this broadcast. If you listen to us on podcast, make sure you follow the podcast. Give us a five-star review. And enable notifications because we're going live all the time. We're posting all the time, and you'll be the first to know it. Love you all. Thank you for those that prayed that prayer. And if you prayed that prayer, you're watching on YouTube, if you rededicated your life or you gave your life to Christ, comment down below and let us know so we can celebrate and pray for you. God bless. Have a great night. Go live your life that outlives your life. God bless.